little learners, welcome back to our pre-K and TK classroom. My name is Miss Lara and today is day one of the five days that we're going to be together. Let me show you what that looks like. One, we have so much to do this week. Have you noticed that things around you are changing colors like the leaves on the trees? And maybe you're wearing clothing that keeps you warm because the weather is chillier. Well, there's a name for that. It's called a season and we're entering a new season. We're saying goodbye summer and hello fall, also called autumn. So we're gonna read books all about fall and autumn and sing songs about that season too. And actually, I have a good song for you about five little leaps. So let me grab them right here. Here they are, my five little leaves. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. And the song's tune is like this. Five little leaves on a tree one day, happily in the wind they play. Then a strong gust of wind, blew one away and the little leaf went away like this. So how many do we have left? One, two, three, four. Let's sing the song again. Five little leaves on a tree one day, happily on a tree they play. Get your wind ready. Then a strong gust of wind, blew through the town and one little leaf came tumbling down. There goes that leaf. How many do I have left? One, two, three. Okay, let's see if we can get them all off the tree. Five little leaves on a tree one day, happily in the wind they play. Then a strong gust of wind, blew through the town and another little leaf came tumbling down. Without counting, can you tell me how many are left? Two, that's right. Two little leaves on a tree one day, happily in the wind they play. A strong gust of wind blew through the town and another little leaf came tumbling down. How many are left? One, that's right. Here's the last time we're going to sing it today. One lonely leaf on a tree one day, very sadly went to play. Then a strong gust of wind blew through the town. And the last little leaf came tumbling down. So how many leaves are left? Zero, that's right, there's none. So I hope that you enjoyed that song with the leaves. And if you don't have leaves at home, don't worry, your fingers could be the leaves. I love singing songs and I also love getting mail. And I think Miss Maria is going to bring some mail for me. There it is, the doorbell. I wonder what book and character wrote us the letter today. Let's check. So look, here's our letter. Now before we read our letter, we have to remind ourselves, hmm, where do we start to read? Now you already know we start at the left and slide to the right, and today I have a new song for you that's gonna help you remember. It goes like this to the tune of The Wheels on the Bus. It goes, let's read the words from left to right, left to right, left to right. Let's read the words from left to right. That's the way we read words. So here we are, left to right. It says, Dear Miss Lara, have I got a story for you. I hear that summer is ending. That's true, summer is over. No more swimming, no more very hot sun, no more ice cream cones. Well, we'll still have ice cream cones. I love summer. Me too. What is there to love about autumn anyway? So what is there to love about autumn? Hmm, also called fall. I 
think that Miss Maria left me a book in here that's going to help us remember that there's lots of things to do in fall, too. Let's see what book it is. Oh, it's one of our favorite characters. You see who it is? It's Pete the Cat. And Pete the Cat says, Ooh, I'm falling for autumn. So we have a video story that we're going to watch about Pete the Cat where he's going to learn to fall in love with fall all over again. So let's watch together. It's story time. Pete the Cat, Falling for Autumn by Kimberly and James Dean. It's the first day of fall and Pete the Cat is feeling blue. I like summer better, he says. In summer, I can swim and surf and play at the beach. Maybe you just need to remind yourself of all the things you love about autumn, Mom suggests. Hmm, Pete says, I'll try. Pete finds Grandma in the kitchen. She's baking delicious pumpkin pies. The whole house smells sweet and spicy. Pete loves helping Grandma bake pumpkin pie, but he loves eating it just a little more. After the baking is done, Pete picks a squat orange pumpkin from the counter and slips it into his backpack as a souvenir. Next, Pete heads to the town corn maze. Pete and his friends wander through the long, twisty paths made of tall corn stalks. As he leaves, Pete plucks a golden corn cob from the maze and places it inside his backpack. Then Pete visits Grandpa, who is knitting on the porch. Together, Pete and Grandpa make a long, cozy scarf for Pete to wear. When they're done, Pete chooses a little ball of leftover yarn and places it inside his backpack. Next, Pete goes to the hayride at the park. Pete, Bob, Mom, Dad, and Grandpa all pile into a wagon filled with hay. They go on a bumpy wagon ride around the park. At the end of the ride, Pete grabs a handful of sweet-smelling hay from the wagon and stuffs it into his backpack. Pete heads over to the apple orchard where he and Callie go apple picking. They eat sweet apple donuts and drink hot apple cider and fill their buckets with apples of all different shapes and sizes. Before he leaves, Pete chooses a round red apple and drops it into his backpack. Next, Pete stops by the park. He plays touch football with Bob and their friends. Pete scores a touchdown and everyone cheers. After the game, Pete grabs Bob's football and stuffs it into his backpack. It barely fits. Bob won't mind if I borrow this, Pete says. Finally, Pete heads back home, but he stops in his front yard, which is covered in bright leaves from the trees. He helps his dad rake the leaves into big, colorful mounds. Then Pete runs and jumps into all the leaf piles. After he's done jumping, Pete picks a bunch of red and gold and orange leaves and stuffs them into his backpack. Pete's backpack is bursting with fall souvenirs. He can't wait to show Mom. I love Autumn, Pete says. Pete helps Mom fill a basket with all his mementos. They place the basket at the center of the table. Just then, the doorbell rings. All of Pete's family and friends are here. They gather around the dining room table and tell stories and laugh at jokes while they eat. Everyone is having a great time. Pete looks around the table and smiles. He loves lots of things about Autumn, but Pete knows what he loves most all year long. His family and friends. The end. So what did you think? Did you like the story of Pete the Cat falling for Autumn? 
Now remember, you can check out lots of Pete the Cat stories and other fall books at your local library, your local free little library, which are now at certain school sites at Fresno Unified, and on the SOAR app. Now, I loved this book, and I wanted to show you my favorite parts. Maybe it was your favorite part, too. Do you remember when Pete the cat got the football and he scored a touchdown? I wonder how he felt. Probably very happy because everybody cheered. And this is another one of my favorite parts of the story. Remember Pete's dad was raking up the leaves, and then Pete ran and jumped in. I don't think Pete's dad liked it very much, but I bet Pete had a lot of fun, didn't he? Now, there's a lot of fun things that you can do in autumn or fall. For our foundational skill today, I'd like you to help me sort the things that we can do in the fall that are happy things and things that maybe we can't do in the fall because of the weather. Are you ready to help me? Okay, here's Pete. He's learning to love fall again. So let's see, swimming. Is swimming something that we do in autumn or fall when the weather is chilly? No, it's too cold, silly. We don't go swimming in the fall. Pete the cat can't do that at all. How about the leaves? Hmm, do we rake leaves in the fall? Do you remember what Pete said? That's right, his dad was raking leaves because all the leaves fall from the trees. So that's something we can do and also jump in the piles like Pete. How about sandcastles at the beach? Is that something we would do in the fall? Hmm, try to think. Fall is a time that's windy. There's no leaves on the trees. Might be a bit chilly. You might not want to go to the beach. And because it's so windy, the sand will get everywhere if you try to build a castle. How about a corn maze? Did Pete get to go on a corn maze? He did, he got to go on a corn maze with all of his friends. And I think we have one here in town that you can go to, at least we used to. And the husks were really tall, so it was a little scary if it was very long. But Pete managed to find his way with his friends, didn't he? How about pumpkin pie? Is that something you might do in the fall time? Yes, there's actually a very special holiday that we celebrate in the fall called Thanksgiving, and it's kind of known for turkey and pumpkin pie. In our story, Pete the cat was baking pumpkin pie, and he loved eating it most of all. How about surfing? Could Pete the cat go surfing? No, too cold. That's for summer. How about picking apples? Yes, Pete the cat went and picked some apples from the apple orchard. And then he got apple cider and donuts. Doesn't that sound like a fun time? Ooh, I'm starting to love fall too. One more thing. How about tractor rides? In the story, Pete and his family went on tractor rides and it was super bumpy. He went up and down. And we have one here in town as well that's also bumpy. So you might want to ask your family to see if you can go on a tractor ride like Pete. So of course, I love to read you stories, but I also love to leave you with a little activity where you can extend the learning at home where you are. So we're gonna go over to our project place where I have a fun activity planned for us. Let's hop over there. So for today's activity, we're actually going to do leaf rubbings. Now you might have done leaf rubbings um, already. Maybe if you've gone to class before or with your family, it's a super simple activity that just requires a few materials. You're going to need some crayons, some leaves, and some paper. And this is what you're going to end up with. It might be a little hard to see, but you can actually see the impression of the leaf. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. So the very first thing that you're going to need are some leaves. And I went on a leaf hunt today. Oh, I was so excited to find all kinds of leaves. Let me show them to you. I found little leaves, little leaves like this with lots of leaves on one stem. Oh, they're even falling. And I found big, giant leaves like this, the size of my hand. And then I found some leaves that were already changing color. So they were brown and little like this. 
And then I found kind of rounder leaves. Do you see the difference? Look at this one's kind of spiky and this one's round and you can even see the round edges here. Now when you find your leaves, I want you to notice by turning them around what you see. You might be surprised to find some lines there on the leaf. That is how the leaf drinks its water and stays alive. Now for your homework today, I want you to look up with your family why leaves change colors and why they have these little veins or lines on the back of them. All right, once you've gotten your leaves of all different sizes and hopefully you have a little more color variety than I do today, you're going to want to take your paper and put your leaf under your paper. Now I like to put my leaf kind of the side that's a little rougher up. So you're gonna have to feel your leaf. This is the smooth side here, and then this is the rough side. You wanna make sure that the rough side is facing up and that you're able to look at it if you look down. I'm gonna take just regular old paper like this. You can use whatever you have, and then I'm going to need a crayon. Now, of course, the crayons that we buy at the store they come with a wrapper on them, but for this activity, we need to take the wrappers off. Now this can be a little frustrating for little hands and big hands too, unless you have very sharp nails. They, those wrappers don't wanna come off. So a little tip I have for you is to soak them in warm water for up to an hour and they just peel right off. So this is what they're gonna look like, a crayon without a wrapper. I think there's a book about that actually and you're going to want to lay your crayon down. So normally, we would hold our crayon like this, like we would a pencil, but having it like this would just be too harsh on the leaf. We kind of want to lay it down. So your crayon has to go to sleep, <gasps> you'll snore, and then you're going to take it and go back and forth where you see the leaf through the paper. I'll show you in just a minute what it looks like. Look at that. And you don't want to press too, too hard because I have already had one of my crowns break. Don't throw them away. Broken crowns are still good crowns. They're just a little special. All right. So here is what my leaf imprint is looking like so far. What do you think? Should we try it with another leaf? Okay, let me get the long, skinny leaf with lots of different leaves on one stem. I'm gonna put it on a different side of the paper here. Make sure that the paper is covering it. Then what color should I use? I tried orange. Oh, I have some red here. Should I try red? Here we go. Let's see what it's gonna look like. Oh, oh, I see the stem. Oh, I move my paper a little here. There it goes. Oh, it almost looks like fire erupting out. Now we're gonna use our leaf rubbings for another activity tomorrow, so make sure that you save them because we're not quite done with them yet. Look at this. What do you think? Let's try another leaf here. All right, this is the largest one. Oh, I need to find a spot on my paper. First I have to feel which is the rough side. What's this one? I'm gonna put it right here. Now my paper isn't gonna cover the whole thing. It's only gonna be partially covered. Partially is a fancy word that means not all the way. So I'm gonna use, ooh, see? I'm gonna use my broken crayon because we can't leave them out. Here we go. And this one I believe is purple. Here we go. Now part of the fun of this activity is being able to go out in nature and see what you find and explore. In just a moment, I'm gonna recommend a book to you about going out in nature and going on a leaf hunt. Okay, let me get, make sure I get all the veining in there. Here we go. Okay. There. Okay, this is what my leaf rubbing is looking like so far. What do you guys think? I see the long skinny one, the large one, the medium one, and of course you can cover your whole paper, but I think this is going to be just fine for now. I have a book for you, actually a couple that I want to recommend. The first one is called, We're Going on a Leaf Hunt. 
so that if you go to your local library or local bookstore, check this one out so you can read it before you go and hunt for your leaves. I also always recommend bringing in a nonfiction text. That usually means a book without characters that tells true facts. So this one's great. It's called I Love Fall. And it tells some things about fall, like why the leaves change and different things like that. So I hope that you check that out. And it looks like we'll have time for me to show you another way that you can leave an impression with leaves. So check this out. Oh, I don't know if you can see there, it's kind of shiny, but there's a leaf in there. There's an impression of it. This activity might be great for like three-year-olds, two or three-year-olds, because they love the texture and the sound that the foil makes. So I'm gonna show you how I made that using the same leaves that I have here. So I'm gonna take my big leaf, and I'm gonna put it down right here, and maybe this small, thin leaf, I'm making a composition of leaves, seeing how I want them laid out. I'm gonna take this one here, and then maybe this kind of crunchier one here. Although you don't want your leaves to be too crunchy because then they will just kind of fall apart on you. Maybe I'll do this one here. What do you think? Ooh, I love it. Then you're gonna take a piece of foil, that's all you're going to need, and place it right on top of your composition. Now, I've tried it both ways, shiny, shiny side up, and I've tried it matte side up, which is the non-shiny side, and both ways work perfectly fine. So this activity is a process activity, so you're gonna wanna go through and kind of feel around for the leaves, and it might be hard to tell here on camera, but you can actually see all the imprint of the leaves on there. And a little tip for parents, if you want a beautiful art print, you can have your child kind of go around and feel around for the leaves. Of course, it's making a noise. And then go back in with tempura paint and have them paint the imprint, frame it up, and it's gorgeous. You can even give those away to the grandparents as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go around feeling the different textures, rough and bumpy, just like Pete's tractor ride, huh? Trying to get as much of the leaf imprint as I can. Let's see, getting in there with my fingers. Now don't go too roughly on the foil because it will tear. Part of this is figuring out where's the leaf? <laughs> because the foil, unlike the paper, is not see-through a little bit. So you kind of have to feel around. That's what makes this activity fun. So I'll show you here in just a minute what the imprint is looking like. Hopefully you can see it, or at least hear the sound that it's making. It's gonna be a little hard to tell on camera, but there is a leaf imprint on there. It's beautiful, you see all the veining. So go ahead and paint this up, frame it, and you'll see how beautiful it can be. All right, boys and girls, looks like we have just enough time to sing our ABC song and for me to tell you what we're going to do for the rest of the week. So let me grab my alphabet cards. Oh, my letter A got messy. Look at that, it needs a bath. It has green all over it. Oh, that A. Hey, you ready to sing with me? A, B, C, a later, D, E, F. This is my favorite. G, I'm gonna mess ya. H, I have to go now. J, K, bye bye now. L, M, N. Oh, I had a good time. P, Q, R, you're gonna miss me. S, T, you are my best friend, V, W, X, Y, and Z. X, Y, Z. That's right, boys and girls, I'll Z you tomorrow. So let me tell you what we're going to do. Make sure that tomorrow you bring your leaf rubbings, the ones that we made together, and your watercolors, because we're going to be adding some color to our leaf prints. That way we can 
hang it up and it could look beautiful and all colorful. So bring your watercolors, water, your leaf rubbings, and any other leaf or embellishments that you might want to add to your art. We're also going to be reading another book about a thief. <gasps> it's a squirrel friend, I think. He lost his leaf. Did the bird take it? We're going to find out. So join me tomorrow where I'm going to read the book live. Until then, Miss Laura sends you a big smooch, a big squeeze. It reminds you to read, play, and enjoy the rest of your day. See you later, friends.